Today I want to show you a really cool plugin that has just been released by Modelix and it's actually a free plugin. It is called Eon App and what it can do is creating pretty cool MIDI sequences. Check out this one. Now the cool thing about this is that it actually creates a time signature that would otherwise be pretty hard to make in a DAW. I mean check this out. This thing is basically currently tuned in a way that it repeats every quarter note of the project but what it does is it splits this quarter note into five steps. So it's kind of like having a 5 fourth measure inside of a 4 fourth measure, if that makes sense. Now you might be wondering, when you have one plugin that does this, then all of the other tracks have to use the same plugin in order to it make sense, because otherwise some tracks will have the wrong measure and others will have the correct measure, right? And I would say yes, that's definitely true, especially if you also put the swing onto some value that just makes it really weird and you know it will just create these unusual rhythms. So you have to keep using it then. For example here I have the pattern that I made for the kick and I wanted it to be twice as long. Of course you have to think rationally and not musically when using it a little bit. I had to figure out how to make it twice as big and it turned out to work like this. You basically just multiply the steps by two so that you can go from five to ten but then you are dividing the denominator of the pattern also by 2 so that you can go from 4 to 2. And if you just remember to do that then you know how you can make it twice as long but with the same sound. And you can keep the swing setting if I get it correctly. It does sound correct to me so it's it, I guess it is correct. I would like the developer to just add some buttons here for these kind of things because I think more people than just me will want to have a feature for just making it twice as long or half as long. I already made some feature requests to the developer but this one would one that I would like as well. In the following I will keep on working on this beat so that you can get behind the workflow of this plugin a little bit. Gotta say I'm not a pro at using it, I'm also just using it since today but I already figured out some workflows that I really like, that I want to show you. First of all I want to have a snare in, in this project. Okay. I think for the snare I will not need the plugin. Nice. Now I will use the plugin again because the next thing that I need is a Hyatt. So I will just copy over this thing that just plays one note over and over again. What I could do now is I could just copy this instance that already has the long steps. But I want to show you how that works. So I will just copy this one pretending like I haven't made one with more steps yet before the sampler. By the way this thing also has an internal synthesizer but I have it disabled all the time because yeah it's like not the main feature of this plugin so I don't think it's really worth the hassle and you are just running the MIDI into your favorite synthesizers anyway in the end. Here I want to try if I can put up the steps to 20 and then put the pattern to 1 1 th Oh that doesn't work. So I cannot go so far. I can only go to 10 steps I guess. Now I will just remove all that. Can I use the delete button for that? Oh I can use the backspace key. That's cool too. Now I use the draw tool to just draw a pattern and it sounds like this. Oh I don't hear the Hyatt, why? Oh just because it's pretty quiet, okay. Okay, I guess I will just copy this and paste it here. I want to have a longer pattern, so to say, but I just had a better idea how to accomplish that. First of all, I could go back to this really short pattern thing, because now I can just make some alternative patterns here and then, you know, switch over between them. Because 
I will turn off snap and choose the tool for touching things so that I can make this shorter. And then I can add another note here. I try to switch between the patterns. I kind of thought it was a parameter. That kind of destroys my idea to switch between these things. Maybe that would also be a reasonable feature request for the developer to just add this being a parameter as a feature because, you know, it's not nice that I can not really use the 20 steps with the beat that I created. Okay, this is pretty nice as well. I can live with that. It's a free plugin, so I cannot complain about this not being the most feature-rich thing ever. But still, I think it's one of the coolest MIDI free plugins that have been released lately. So it would be reasonable to request one or the other feature for the future to really just nail this thing, because it has so much potential. That's, that's why I still make feature requests, even though this is free. Okay, cool. Now let's actually try to write another melody. I guess I will just use Synth 1 for that now, because it's easy to use. All right, I got a sound that I like pretty much. It sounds kind of cute. Now I want to find out how I can use this. So my first instinct would be to just copy this stuff over so that the plugin knows which notes this melody can consist of. My second impulse is to give it a different color. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Copying the plugin from here to here, putting it before the synthesizer, let's go. Of course, we cannot just use the same melody again. So let's increase the steps again, use clear, and now we write something new. Okay, so I decided for this octave, that's a nice start. Now I want to find different notes or, or some note to start the melody with. Sometimes it's kind of hard to feel into this when you cannot really see the swing pattern, but only hear it. Maybe it would be cool if there was an alternative mode for the note editor, where the note editor actually moves along with the swing setting. Okay, that's pretty cool. Kind of weird 
but cool. Now the next thing I want to do is making a baseline. For that I will use MS2. Okay, I got a nice little bass sound that's kind of white. Of course, we don't want the bass sound to be too white. Let's actually remove the width from the low end. Okay, sounds nice. Now at this point I would kind of wish there to be a cut tool because I, I just want to cut this note in half and then just move the, the other side of the note. That would be a cool workflow now. Instead I have to make this shorter and make a new note that I will drag out. Just a little bit of brainstorming for the developers. I know that they will be watching this video as well. Okay, that's cool. Let's listen to everything. Time to carve some space into the bass. ADSR, direct out and ADSR is going to be muted. Now I will add the tool, tool to the baseline with an audio rate modulator where I select the output from my plugin. Okay, so it's time to make a little conclusion about this plugin. I really love this plugin, especially I love the workflow of creating unique time signatures by just using the steps and pattern parameters to define what should be going on in this window. However, I don't like that I do have to copy this plugin everywhere and adjust these settings in order for it to work in different contexts. I think this should actually be a DAW feature. I think DAWs should give us piano rolls like this. A sort of a high level piano roll that doesn't let me play the individual notes anymore, but you know, a high level control where I can define a scale beforehand and then it will just cycle through the notes of the scale or something like that and also define complex rhythms. Bitwig is already a little bit like that, but it's not always unproblematic. For example, Bitwig has its own shuffle settings and it works the same as it does here. In the piano roll it does not show how the swing affects the notes but just places the distribution of notes visually the same way as before but you can hear the difference and that's exactly how Bitwig solves this problem. But that's sometimes problematic because if you try to use that together with an audio recording then if the moment where you cut the audio recording on any place that is not on a full beat, it will be played back like it is being shifted somewhere else because then the groove is applied to it. And that just absolutely makes no sense in most cases. So I basically never use the groove feature and that's just really sad, you know, because if this was a properly implemented door feature with negative swing especially because that's something that you cannot do here as far as I know, no, you can't. Um, so first of all negative swing and secondly swing that I can bounce into the actual notes 
and that is not just applied in real time. That would be cool because then I could actually use the swing settings in a serious way while also using recordings. DAW developers should implement that and also this high level notes control. If they did that, I'm sure it would be used by many more people than when it's just a free plugin. The developers took a lot of care to make it as comfy as possible with this innovative workflow with the steps and pattern parameter and all the functionality how you can draw the notes in here and stuff and still it's not as good as a door could make it if a door would try it so why are all doors even innovative ones like bitwig still kind of stuck at normal piano rolls and that's enough from my review of eon arp